depression, and bad behavior. When asked why we did something negative, the average person, even children, will respond that he or she, or it was the blame. We will blame everything else around us. And I see grown folk do that. I can almost understand a child. But when you see grown women and men doing that, I don't let me. But I started thought about it. It happened in the beginning. When God came down and they ate of the tree, the first thing that Adam said was the woman you gave me, Lord. And the first person she blamed it was that serpent, Lord. Nobody took responsibility for their own actions. It's time to take responsibility for your own actions. Okay? We tend to blame somebody else or some other thing for our emotional mistakes and bad behavior. Watch this, people. I don't know how many times I've heard this in the church. The devil made me do it. <laughs> Most of the stuff you do, the devil didn't have nothing to do with it at all. It was all you. There ain't nothing but religious charge. The devil made me do it. No, the devil didn't. The devil's sick of y'all. <laughs> but stuff he didn't even come. All the devil tried to do is get you to kill yourself. There are five basic rescuing concepts that are important for you to learn in order for you to be empowering yourself to call upon a spiritual help for healing. These healing concepts are healing truth. When we don't know the truth, we are most likely to believe a lie and be, what's that word? Bamboozle. You've been bamboozled. The devil is looking to bamboozle you. All right. No one can be healed as long as their illness or addiction is based on false beliefs. All right? Let's look at A some more. Ready? Concept number one. The truth about your life events. A does not equal C. Ain't that what we said? A does not equal C. I got to close this book over here and get over here to this book. This is the class that I went through. It's called Rational Emotive Spiritual Therapy. All right? By Dr. Rick McKenna. And I hope I'm doing them justice this evening and in the weeks to come. So instead of me writing all this, so I'm going to do, be doing a lot of reading, and I want you all to just catch it. Now, A does not equal C. What does that mean? An activating event does not, does not mean you want to immediately go to your emotions. Okay? So here we go. i got to move this out of the way. Most activating events are beyond our control. So if somebody coming up to you, you wasn't expecting you walking down the street and somebody come up and smack you in the face. Were you expecting it? I've had that happen at the preaching before in Philly. Coming home from the preaching. These three young boys were walking around. One of them just walked right up to me and said, Bow! And my whole reaction was, I'm kidding. <laughs> but then I remembered everybody in Philly carried a pistol and I wouldn't get it. So I ain't know whether it's two friends, but I just said, What's wrong with you, dude? Because his punch is weak. But again, I decided to take the other thought. See, knowing that everybody in the area I was living at the time had a bad ass, everybody carried a gun. It's just, that's what you did. You know, when no more fair ones, as we used to call it, everybody just shot. Pow, that was it. Still there. It's not the activating event A that leads to our emotion C and behavior D. Now I'm going to read this some more. Can you stop someone from calling you a bad name? Prevent your home from being destroyed by fire? Or prevent someone from divorcing you if they want to? The obvious answer is no. And yet, people try to control circumstances beyond their control. We believe that bad things should, shouldn't happen to us. How many things? What does think you have to do? When we are unable to control activating events or make them go away, it is then that we feel badly and do bad and act destructive things out in our lives. The truth is that no one can successfully control another person without losing control of herself or himself in the process. Neither can we control unforeseen events or negative situations. Now B, this is most important. B, the truth about our beliefs. B equals C. B equals C. So when my activating event kicks in, I'm going to look at my belief factor, which is going to control my emotions and feelings. All right, is this starting to come a little bit clear to y'all? Amen. Just let me know. Don't worry. We will cover it again. So here we are. We think B about the activating event, A, leads to how we feel, C. Uh, I, guess, I hope I'm not getting too heavy to you. The Bible teaches, as a man thinking so is, rest teaches that B, our thoughts and beliefs, leads to C, our feelings and emotions and our consequences. 
As he thinketh, so is he. All right, let's look at this some more. One of the things I want to say about me is this. Whatever you believe, I want you to grab it. I never thought I would say that. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I know I began in the NA programs and all that stuff, and the Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, that tool they had, the 12 steps, which I know now are from the Bible, and they really called Tilios in Christ, Holiness in Christ, and you follow those 12 steps. But once I completed those things, matter of fact, I don't think I made it past five. But, because by the time I hit five, five, I got to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Then I started realizing a lot of it was false. But if it's a beginning, right, because that could still be a tool. I still think that tool would use for me to come fully into Jesus. All right? I don't advocate it as a lifestyle or as a religion, but if it's a beginning, grab it. All right? I really do. I really believe that. Let's look at C. C equals B. Now, C, your emotions and your feelings are going to cause or cause you to do things or behave a certain way. All right? Cool. Now, how does C equal D? How we feel, C, about what we think, B, about the activating event, a, I'm going to have to say that again, leads to how we behave and what we do. D. Now, you got that? How we feel, C, our emotions, right, about the way we think, B, whether it be negative or positive, about the activating event, A, because somebody called me a bad name, will what? Lead to how we behave, D. So if I say, you know what, brother? I love you today. What is your belief system going to do? Wow, thank you. That made me feel good. Then what's that going to do? Kick in the emotion. Now what is that behavior going to do? Oh, man, give me another. Are okay. right, y'all feeling it? Mm -hmm. But if I walk up and say, you know what, dude? I'm about to smack you in the face. What? My belief system says what? Protect me. My emotion says now, defend me. And my behavior says, get him before he gets me. Amen. Uh, I guess I made that a <laughs> 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 Now, Jeffrey, you got it now. <laughs> Watch this. If he says, I'm going to keep My belief system says, oh, I got in the armors of God. Touch not thine anointing, do thou profit no harm. Amen. A soft answer turns away wrath. Hey, brother, you know I love you. Things are okay. Mm -hmm. Why? Now, what's happening? My emotional system calms down. And it may even calm down that person. But while I'm telling you, brother, I love you, why don't you calm down? I'm backing up to you. <laughs> I'm using some wisdom. Because now my behavior's kicking in. What? Don't be stupid. Be wise. Put a little distance between you. <laughs> now, you know, I ain't going to get so spiritual to talk about you know, hug them. But your belief system can change the event. Okay. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And that's the same thing when it comes to your drug addiction and anything else you're dealing with. You need to practice it. I'm going to try to get each and every one of your scriptures to know every emotional event. You know, I just couldn't have money today to go ahead and print all that out and didn't have the time, okay? But I didn't know how many of you would be serious. I only want the serious ones. Right. If you're serious about learning how to get through this thing, are you tired, people? Yes. Are yes. you tired of living this way? Yes. Do you want something better? Yes. Because you can have it. Yes. But you got to work it. Did I work this thing overnight? No. no. I'm not standing up here telling you this thing worked overnight, man. It takes practice. It takes practice. Now, where was that? Let's look at um, by the being understanding our behavior. I think we already read that, didn't we? All right. All right. I want to finish reading this. The letter C in our equation refers to feelings and emotions and consequences. Where do feelings come from? Why do some people have so many negative or painful emotions and feelings or emotional distress? What are the most common negative feelings we should be aware of? Here's the question. Where do your feelings come from? Where do your feelings come from? Answer. Most feelings are the result of our thinking about what happened to us. B equals C. When we interpret things that happen to us, our events in our lives with a negative belief system, shoulds, musts, oughts, self-damnation, offerings, or I can't stand it this time, or I only can't stand it. Uh -huh. See, we switch. How many times have you ever heard somebody talk about, this shouldn't happen to me, you must. I think, what? What? Amen. We tend to feel bad, sad, bad about the activating event. To the degree we feel sad, bad, or mad is the degree to which we are controlled by negative feelings 
and emotions such as anger, depression, anxiety, worry, shame, guilt, or professionalism. In reality, negative, inappropriate, controlling feelings are created by our negative thoughts. Because as soon as somebody comes to you, immediately you think negative. Because first of all, you have no self-worth. I know I've been trying to bless certain folk and maybe even before I get the sentence out, they think it negative. When I do that, what's wrong? Even folk on the job. Why are you coming to me, man? Did I do something wrong? Are you here to check up on me? No. The, you know, the greatest thing that's been happening this week, I told you I didn't think that promotion was in for me. But don't you know God will turn that whole thing right? Didn't I tell you I was going to work that thing? Amen. The whole department has changed because they got a new I thought they were trying to get rid of me. And I found out the reason why they brought me in there was to change the spirit. Now, I say spirit, but they wanted the morale change. Because they had somebody talking negative to them, talking like they couldn't do it, talking down to them, making them feel. So the morale of the child was like, so I went in there and said, hey, we are all partners. You can do it just like me. Matter of fact, I need your help. Come on, we're a team. And if you're a know-it-all, please leave my department. Because I don't want you. Because you're going to be talking down to people. Now, if you're here to assist and be a team player and unify, don't you know the joy just kicked in like that? Amen. It kicked in like that less than a week. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I was the one thinking stupid. I thought they were trying to get rid of me. And actually, they just wanted to use what God had already put in me. Amen. 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 So it's wonderful. It's wonderful. All right, let's look at D a little bit. Self-defeating behavior. D leads to other negative activating events. Now I'm going to read this part. What causes bad behavior? Why do some people continue to get in trouble? Why is it that some people lose control and do things that they later regret? How many of you ever done something that you hated? Amen. Okay, uh, no, I'm not the only one in the room. <laughs> bad behavior happens this way. It warns that these unpleasant and inappropriate emotions often take control of an individual and lead him or her into negative, dysfunctional, and self-destructive behavior. Destructive behavior is either expressed or repressed. Out of control behavior destroys property, hurts or destroys someone else, or hurts and destroys the person himself. You know when we're getting high, we're destroying ourselves. Amen. Okay. You think alcohol is a, 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 a vitamin? <laughs> you think crack is a supplement? You think heroin is a relaxant? I mean, it can be a laxative. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, uh huh. That's been this week straight. <laughs> the physical destruction of property, other persons, or self is expressed behavior. How many of you ever got mad just want to break glass, break the window, you know, go, go. crack this, or destroy that person's stuff? That's the, that's the behavior out there. However, whenever negative behavior is repressed, it buries itself in the subconscious and can produce negative physical consequences. Psychosomatic aches and pains, high blood pressure, headaches. Who got headaches all the time? Uh-huh. You know where they come from. Didn't you find all the pills in the world to try to ease it? I found out with my headaches, I have to locate what's bothering me. As soon as I find out who and what is bothering me and get rid of it, the headache stops. Ain't no Amen. aspirin, ain't no pill, go get rid of it. Until you get rid of the source that's causing the headache. And it's usually another individual. Right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 The results of this suppressed negative behavior are self-destruction and sickness. This negative behavior can also be projected at a later time toward an innocent object external to an individual. And you know who they are? Your kids. Your, your wife. Your husband. The one you love the most is when you pour out all your negative emotion. In. And I've been trying to backtrack on that. This is why this whole thing has been a relearning process for me. Because I'm, I'm into something now I'm not used to. I'm married again after being single for 10 years. So I have to re-educate myself again. And I have to realize that there are certain levels of understanding I'm not used to. I'm sorry, Southern God, there are certain things y'all do that we don't do in the North. And I'm not used to it. Southern men, y'all got a lot of whatever it is. Yeah. But I'm not used to it. God bless y'all. And I like when one brother told me, 
we said, man, that's how we were raised. We were just raised. Well, I said, we what? I'm sorry. Because we just what? But I said, I have changed that kind of behavior to serving Jesus. But then I realized, see, this is where God, you know, God is working on you and your emotions on a continual basis. No matter how far you think you're in Jesus, if you've been one way and learned one way, that's why it's time for an unlearning, you can pull that thing up from the depth of your belly and let it come right back out. Let it come right back out. Like it was brand new yesterday. That's why I said, Lord, it's time for you to learn all this stuff. Amen? Amen. Let's look at this. Breaking the vicious cycle of self-defeating behavior. This is going to be the last portion of this. And then in the weeks to come, y'all, we're going to start covering everything we talk about. We're going to start covering your fears. We're going to start covering your anxiety. How do you feel ashamed in here? We're going to get rid of that. How do you feel loneliness in here? We're going to get rid of that. Because all of them lead to your behavior. You're only numbing that emotion. We're going to get to the point you're not going to worry about what family thinks about you because you're going to have a positive thought about yourself. And when you start thinking positive about you, a person can say you X, Y, Z, but if they say it to the other person, they're going to I don't see that. It's strange to them. But if a person speaks it to you and you believe it, then guess what? It's true. If I make you believe something about yourself, it becomes true. But if you don't accept what I say negatively about you, it falls to the ground. Don't let nobody beat you down. Amen? All right, we're going to talk about this. Now, we're going to talk about how we're going to learn how to act. I got room to write it on here. We're going to do some more writing later. This is concept number five, where B and C will change D. By changing B, the way we think, C, the way we feel, changes when C changes D, which is our behavior. And we're going to learn how to do something called a T-E-R, Trace, Erase, Replace Technique. T-E-R, Trace, Erase, Replace. You're going to trace the issue, erase the issue, then replace the issue. Y'all got it? Amen. And you got to practice it. Trace, Erase, Replace. How does that work? No one is forced to think negative, irrational thoughts. We learn to do so, even from babies. We teach ourselves this habit, or we learn from those around us. Peer pressure. Remember, anything learned can be unlearned. It is at the point of wanting to change that we learn to believe in spiritual values and spiritual power. Spiritual values and spiritual power. I like to always say this, change people change people. Don't expect people, your family, your friends, your loved ones to change unless you are willing to change. That's why I said despite what's going on around me, it must be time for Warren to change. As soon as you think you reached a certain plateau, it's time for you to change. If everything around you seems to be falling apart, there must be a time to look in the mirror and say it's time to change again. That person who's making you sick to the stomach, making you angry, there must be a reason. So don't say they need to change. Go in the mirror and say, what can I do to change again? Because once I change again, and it'll trickle in the them, maybe they'll change. Amen. But even if they don't, God will change you Amen. to a new venue. Amen. Amen. And he'll get rid of the person who's causing you not to change. Amen. 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 That's where I'm at today. I'm going to change. If I say I love Jesus, I've got to keep loving him. Despite what's going on. Because I'm human too. Amen. Let's keep reading this final part. It is by stopping the negative self-talk, playing in our heads, erasing it, and replacing it with positive, rational, spiritual thoughts that we gain control of our life. So it's time for us to replace it with rational, spiritual thoughts. And the only way you're going to do that, people, is you've got to find scripture. you got to start reading your Bible. you got to start praying. Amen? Amen. Old negative self-destructive behaviors and habits will disappear and be replaced by healthy, productive behavior. It cannot come easy, folks. I like to say that. This ain't something that's going to come easy, especially if you struggle with reading, especially if you struggle with praying. It's going to become another point of wanting to do it. Look, the habit you gain, you learn without a fault. Amen. I learned how to become a good kleptomaniac in the thief. I learned how to get high. I learned how to hide the drug. I learned how to sweep the women, sweep to get what I want. I learned how to what? Read books. I learned how to study technology. Everything you want will take a learning process. So 
the same things that you put your energy into learning negatively, put the same energy into learning something positive. And no matter who comes around you, kick them to the curb. Kick them to the curb. Negativity, push it down. Even if they write, speak it positive for yourself. Amen? It may not come easy. However, the practice must continue daily in real life situations wherever you may be. At home, at work, walking down the street, wherever you're at. You've got to put this into practice. You can change people. Do anybody here want to change? Good. I hope to see y'all here every week. I don't know what day is. It's going to be Thursday or Friday. But until God changes me from this, this is what we're going to talk about. Do y'all want it? Amen. 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 So it's time to learn something, right? We bring the Bible here consistently and consistently and consistently, but one of the things I never saw was somebody telling you how to do it. I went through it for you to show you that I can't keep it for myself. I can be selfish, but I said, God, I want to give it away. He said, that's what I designed you to do. I put you through this so you can give it to whoever needs it. So grab it, people. Final things I want to say. You can be happy. You want to be happy? Yeah. You can be healthy. You want to be healthy? Yeah. Do you want to be successful? Yeah. All right. Why? Because Jesus said this. You can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens you? Use grab. Tell you, young lady. No matter what's going on, whatever frustrates you, look right at that turkey. You say, I all this right. You already grabbed You know what you just grabbed? You just grabbed something called a S. R.T. Scripture replacement thought. When someone speaks negative, you put in your head a S.R.T. Whatever scripture works for you, even if it is Jesus loves you, God is love. I'm so happy today. Anything that will change the thought. They walk in, you did X, Y, Z, you know you did that right, I did it right. I love you, and I'm going to fix it right now. Mm -hmm. Baby, what's wrong with you? I've been calling you all day. I can do all things. <laughs> If you 